Welcome to section three, working with client-side data management. In this section, we're going to look at creating new data on the fly. We're going to learn how to route between different data sets. You'll learn understanding the V model and how to build a form using it. And also we'll learn how to use two-way computer properties. That's a pretty cool feature that's kind of underused. So let's see what we can do with it. In this video, we're going to learn how to create new data on the fly. And in more detail, we're going to look at the model, what it is, and also some challenges when managing component state. They will be clear to you by the end of the video. Well, let's get to it. All right, that's pretty much where we left off. We had our sidebar and the app content over here, and there's nothing in there yet. So what we try to do today is by creating data on the fly, we want to have a form in this place here and be able to add new data to this data set up here on the left. That will be tricky because this data set is currently very local to the sidebar and how can we get access to the state of the sidebar using a completely new component. So let's see how we can do this. Okay, here's our sidebar. That's the list that we're rendering and this is the data we created so far using the last time. As the first step today, I want to pour the data somewhere where it's like above the content where we want to create something. This would be the app component, where we require the sidebar and the app content, and eventually the app content will be the place where the form is living. So this seems like a good place for me to start. So let's do this for now. All right, we copied everything over, and now the data is stored in our app view component. So the next thing is we need to pass it down to our sidebar again to have it available there. All right, so now the property of contacts get passed in directly, and we use contacts here in this context. The app component itself now has the data set and pass it down to the sidebar. So let's check in the browser if everything is there where we want to. Jane and John are both here, and our app content is still empty, of course, but the data set should now have app containing contacts, and we see on sidebar that context gets passed down as a property. So that's perfect. All right, let's switch to our app content where we eventually want to manipulate the data set we have here. So first, one little change and tweak we're going to do. As we see, Jane and John both have IDs and one and two, like they're not ideal. And especially we don't want to keep track of all those IDs when creating new data. So we want to automate this process. So there's a little tweak you can do in model list. By using set primary key, our data will automatically be enriched by the primary key. What's ID by default. So they will have an ID and for the IDs, we create a completely unique ID. So that's a very long string. This will be very handy for us if we want to push new data to this collection. So let's actually switch down to the app content. All right. Here we are. In our app content, we want to create a form or at least an input field for now that will allow us to add new data to the outside data. All right, here's some outline that we're going to use going forward. We have our input field and we have our button. Let's check it in the browser. We see the contact name and add contact is where it should be. So how can we get this wired up to write data to the outside collection? First of all, we need to submit what everything's there. Interesting piece here, and I feel bad for admitting it so far. We need access to this input field. If you read the view documentation, you probably already stumbled over V model, but I try to wait for it till it's time that we really can dive deeper into it. So for now, as we have a video later in this section about V model in detail, let's allow V model allows you to bind a data set to an input field. So for example, we have a data called name and our input should write to this one directly. So all we need to do is create it for now. So the model creates a connection between name and name down here. That's actually what we want to have. So when everything changes in here, it will be reflected in this piece of data. Let's check it out in the browser. 
We see our data set here with name. And if we start writing something, it's correctly reflected in this current data set. So this is perfect for creating a connection between both sets. So let's make good use of this. First of all, we want to create a new data in model list. How do we do this? There's a method on the collection that's called record, and this will allow you to create new records and new entries to this collection. So first, we want to create a method and what add contact should do, it should create a new contact. To call this method again, we need to bind it to our button. All right, so let's first prepare our data set that we want to create. So let's create a const with contact and pass the name to it. All right, add contacts. Now create a new object called contact where we pass in the name, exactly as in the outside. So now we come to the tricky part. We need to tell the outside world that this record is there and should record it for us accordingly. So there's a little thing called dollar parent. If you've seen this by inspecting the view components, there's parent and this will give you access to the parent component and everything that's on its scope. That said, be careful using this. Parent creates a very tight relationship between both components. So if you ever want to change anything down there, you will always have to know what's your current parent. So that's a tricky situation. We will learn how to do this better in a later video. For now, let's go for this. All right, let's see if it works. Cool, it actually works. We put our name, we clicked on a button, and Snickers pops up in our data set. If we want to inspect the data set, ideally, let's go to sidebar. We see there's Jane Doe, and the last one now is Snickers, and they all have their unique ID. So that's quite handy. There's one thing we may want to add as well. We want to set the field to null again after updating. So let's do this. Well, that's it. If we click on add contact, afterwards we set this name to an empty string again. And as we know, there's a relationship between the input field and our data set. And therefore, the empty string is represented on the input field and it is set to null again. That's perfect. So there are two little things left for us to do. First of all, our app content should be somewhat dynamic. And therefore, we don't want to have this form living inside here. So let's move this to a separate component. So we create a new form view component and let's reference this one in the app content. All right. So what we do now, we will copy and paste this one or better said, cut it out and let's move it to the form where it should live. All right, here we are. So also let's copy over the HTML. And as we said, this should be a form. Let's just wrap it in a form tag. So let's see if everything works and put form into that tag. If we now check the browser, we see there's not a form wrapped in there and everything we have with contact and add contact is correctly set here. So let's add a new name. Oops, something went wrong here. First of all, we don't see an output here. Why? Because we wrapped everything in a form tag. So let's fix this for now. The action will submit the form accordingly and send it somewhere. This is something we want to prevent. What we will do, we will hook into the submit event. So that's quite nice. And so we don't need to listen to this button click directly and could also submit the form using enter. Let's just turn this in a submit button. And the good thing is now the form will take care of submitting it to the method that we defined in here, add contact. All right, let's see what happens. Oops, there is the error. Can't read property record of undefined. Where does this come from? Well, we said before that we create a very tight couple between the parent and the child component. And now we nested it a little deeper and went further down a level. So we need to update the relationship. So what we'd need is the parent of the parent. Let's verify it works. 
and we get our data here accordingly. That's perfect. But let's review the code. We now have to traverse over two parents to get to the data set and then add what we want to add. This is not ideal. And this was definitely an entry into the world of pain. So this is something we want to refactor as soon as possible. But for this video, I'll leave it for here.